Hey everybody, this is Molly. Well, I wanted to do a quick little tutorial of how I learned how to make some flowers. These aren't the flowers I'm going to be showing you. These are. But, I wanted to show you, while well, I got you, I'm kind of trapped here. I want to show you some layouts that I finished. And this is one of them. It's a die cuts with a view pad that I bought from Joann's. I'm so sorry I didn't, uh, the cover is gone. All the pages are used and all. But anyway, so I wanted to share this with you. Aren't these some pretty, um, flowers. For these, I just layered, I cut and layered up some uh, papers and vellum and then some of the uh, flowers that you can get from our collections or Prima that you can spray. These are sprayed with Lindy's Stamp Gang sprays. I love them. But see how the pretty paper looks behind. Okay, enough rambling. So this is the first layout I did. But what I really wanted to share with y'all today, this layout, I used a flower technique that I learned how to make from a lady named Tanya. That's all I know. Her name is Tanya. She lives a little bit north of me, but we were together at a crop this weekend, a wonderful crop in uh, Sulphur, Louisiana, and she showed me how to make these flowers. Now, I have seen a hundred videos or more on how to make paper flowers, and I have not had much luck because that wetting and crimp, you know, what they call spitballing, and then trying to glue all the layers together, I end up tearing them. They don't have the look I want and all, but Tanya showed me how to do this. She's so generous with her time, so artistic, um, and it was so easy. I could not believe how easy it was, and I love how they turned out, and of course, the style of flower you get just depends on what um, punch you use, or in my case, I use the silhouette. Okay, so here's the layout, and then a sweet little, uh, now like you're going to answer me, but anyway, a sweet little vintage looking um, layout. Did I ever mention how much I love my silhouette? Okay, so let's get started on the tutorial on how to make these flowers. Okay, now you're going to laugh when you see how easy this is. Oops, sorry about that. But let's get started. Okay, what I did, if you have flower punches, you just cut different sizes. You can see here where I've got different sizes. I hope you can tell the difference and all. And you'll need five or six layers per flower. Now, in my case, I don't have a lot of flower punches, and I'm finding you can't buy a whole lot of them as much lately as they used to. But on my silhouette, I just now, you know, got a flower, and then, you know, resized it a couple of different sizes to make my layers. Okay, so you get your layers cut out. Now, the quality of paper does make a difference, but I, what I found is you can use almost any weight, and the flowers Tanya showed me, oh my gosh, she was using um, book pages, lightweight text uh, print papers, um, beautiful card stocks, uh, the solid papers that you get from Michaels or so that come in the color pack and you know, with all the different shades in there and all. Just any kind of papers, but that's what you do. You cut them out. Okay, now here's the easiness of it that was like, duh. This paper, let me um, go off for just a minute and tell you. This paper is from the, you know, the hot buy pads you get from Recollection, if you know those. They are white core paper and the color is uh, put on top, and I mean it is, you can almost wet it and get it off with your finger. So, not great quality paper, but they're very pretty and they cut good on the silhouette. But what happened with these, when I made them and crinkled them, I don't know if you can see them. See, I did some darker colors and lighter colors. The color was, when I crinkled them, the color was actually starting to come off from the paper, but it gave a nice uh, look to it. So these, after they dried, I just sprayed them real lightly with uh, Lindy's Stamp Gang and it gave it a pretty look, but a nice vintage look. But the papers, the paper that I used here was a solid core pink paper, and I didn't get the white lines and the all, oh, but I, so I just kind of distressed the top of it with Tim Holtz. Okay, I digress, sorry. But anyway, so this is the cheap, 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 cheap cardstock. Okay, white core, ugh. Anyway, okay, so what you did, what I would recommend and I did on these, and I'm going to do here, is to ink the edges of the flowers first if you want to. Now, Tanya also, let me scoot away for a minute. Hold on. Tanya also laid her flowers out on paper. I wish to, oh, Tanya, I love you wherever you are and whatever your last name is. You are, you're a, truly a gift. Anyway, she laid her flowers on paper, and honey, she was just stamping and, you know, marking up her flowers, doodling on them, whatever so that each layer had wonderful interest in texture stamping on them and all. Just wonderful interest in texture. I'm lazy, lazy. <clears throat> so I just distressed my edges. So of course I got the Tim Holtz sponger 
and you just go around in distress. Now you can ink, you can stamp whatever you want to, but you can see here, my favorite color of Tim Holtz ink has become that ground espresso. It's a perfect blend of black and brown, I find, for you know the shading I like. So anyway, you just go ahead and um, ink up the edges. Now, brilliantly, I didn't on these. So I'm gonna ink my flower after we make it. But all you do on here, if you can see, I layered up two big layers, two medium layers, and one small layer. And you staple the dadgum thing together. You can use a brad in the middle, you know, poke a hole and use a brad. But what I found with these big old, you know, hoofs it got here, um, the hole from the brad gave me a chance to tear the paper easier. The staple, you know, it's the little Tim Holtz Tiny Tatcher staple, if you have that. Um, I, I didn't tear a flower. Probably I'm going to tear one on this video just because I said that. But anyway, so you just make your little stacks. So you make your stacks. That, not too hard. Cut your flowers, ink the edges, stamp them, do whatever you want. Then layer them up. Five or six layers. And then um, staple them together. How easy is that? Just as a note, Tanya did use a different little flower in the center of some of hers. And it made a nicer little rosebud kind of looking middle or, you know, bud looking middle. But she was using hers more on a 3D project mixed media. I was using more on mine on scrapbook pages, so I wanted them flatter. Okay, now the hard part. Oh my gosh, this is so technical. You take a spray bottle. I happen to have the Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer I bought. Like, I'm so fancy I got this. But any old spray bottle will do. You wet them, then you crinkle. And that's it. So, you crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. And that staple kind of gives you a center to work from. Oh gosh, I hope you can see this. And for me, I just kind of, can you see how I'm layering them to where they're going to crunch together? And you just crunch. There's no method or, you know, uh, can you see that white core paper is showing? Okay, so you crunch that up. Wet, wet, wet. Grab the next layer. Crunch it up. And see, you're not having to worry about spreading them back out or tearing them or anything or attaching them later. That's where I was having trouble. I'd get the dead gum things made and then I couldn't, you know, it was, by the time I tried to glue them together and get them straight again, it's like, Lord, what a mess. And I had tore off half my petals. Um, this, I can sit here and kind of uh, assembly line make them and it was just a lot easier. Okay, now when I'm doing them, I don't know if you can notice, I kind of take and after I crunch them, bend my leaves out. See how that's looking like a pretty rose? This is where I'm saying Tanya left hers more up, like this. I don't know if I've mentioned that, but Tanya's my new hero, I tell you. Anyway, now this one, of course, I didn't put the big layer on the back. So, you can see where this now could become a perfect little rose. Or you can open it up. And in my case, what Tanya recommends, and I keep quoting Tanya, because I wish, I'm, I'm telling you, that girl is but woman is talented. Anyway, she let them dry like that. Put it aside, let it dry. After it dries, I don't have the Miracle of TV here. There's no Easy Bake Oven. So let's act like this dried. It would dry firm. You know how the paper dries after you wet paper, it's hard. You know, you can see how hard it gets. After that, if you want it for a scrapbook page, then you just kind of open it up. Now, I didn't put the little rosebud middle. So and didn't make enough layers. So you can see where my staple may show. I'll stick a rhinestone in there or something. Or I could have added another layer. That is as easy as it is. After it's dry, you can ink before and the water will kind of melt the ink, you know, melt the ink, give you a nicer watercolor look. Or after it's dry, you can come back and gesso it a little bit, hit it with a little gesso or ink. And it's so easy. But I, real, I, I know this sounds you know, how dumb am I, you know, old to the flower making thing here. That's been going on for years. But, Tanya, I want to thank you very much. It was as easy as cutting the layers. The trick is stapling them to get, you know, see how I offset each one so it goes, you know, you can't see through to the back. Stamp them, ink them, do whatever you want to, then staple them all together. Wet a layer crinkle, wet a layer crinkle, wet a layer crinkle, and that's as easy as it is. I wish I'd add another layer in there so you wouldn't see my staple. We'll just crunch that back up. Okay, and then while you're doing it, just kind of pull back your edges if you want that or whatever. But you can see how easy it is to shape them. And I am not talented with this stuff. I have no patience for it. But this one I found to be the easiest thing. On this one, I try to take a little gold, you know, uh, 
glittering, you know, uh, wax or whatever you call it and do the edges and all. But anyway, so this is how easy they came out and they look so nice and vintage -y. Uh Thank you, Tanya. Thank you all for spending time with me. Just because I got you, I'm going to show you one more layout I did. Now, it's in plastic, so I hope the reflection's not too bad. But, uh, see, I made this little layout. Isn't that pretty? I will always remember. Doesn't that look like a, you know, when you've lost a loved one? But, um, I thought it was a sweet little layout. Wanted to share it with you. Again, thank y'all so much for your time. Hope you enjoyed this quick and rambling tutorial to make these easy, easy flowers. Um... Let me know if you use it, and uh, if you've got some good ideas, please share. Thank you again, Tanya, for everything. And y'all, thanks for joining us. Have fun. Bye-bye.